welcome to Coffee Break Blogging, where you'll learn to grow and monetize your blog in short, tactical installments you can use right away. Now here's the next episode in our series. Welcome back to another installment of Coffee Break Blogging, where this isn't just another podcast, it's a full course on building an online business based around blogging from scratch. My name again is David Risley, and if you want to catch up with us from the beginning of this course, go to coffeebreakblogging.com to view the full archives. Okay, let's get into our topic for today. What we're going to be talking about today is going to be kind of informal, but it's one that you guys have seen many, many times, and that is... Prices that end in seven. Very, very popular in the whole internet marketing world. And you might wonder, is there really any reason for it? Is there some deep reason that you're unaware of why so many internet marketing prices end in the number seven? So the, here's the thing. It's kind of funny how some things just happen because, quote, everybody knows that. Everybody just kind of knows. It's like this herd mentality. Thing is, nobody is really being the leader here, but everybody thinks that everybody else is being the leader. And so it's just literally is a herd mentality where everybody else, everybody thinks that everybody knows something. And so what happens is it develops into this culture of prices that end in seven. And it's kind of funny. I mean, it really is. I've I've priced things at seven many, many times. I still have a few prices. Some of my front end offers at the Blog Marketing Academy actually are seven bucks. I, I you know the but I'll I'll be the first to tell you there's really no science behind it. There isn't. There, I've believe me. I've done some looking around. I can't find any actual test results that shows that seven prices convert better. I've seen no successful split test of any statistical significance that shows that a price that ends in seven converts better than anything else. And it that's just the way that it is. From the best that I can tell. This goes back to a well-known marketer named Ted Nicholas, who kind of said at one of his workshops that prices that end in seven raises sales. Now, he might have experienced that because maybe he did some split testing and then he just kind of, you know, casually said it. I don't really know. But from there, it kind of just started this urban myth in the internet marketing world where people just started pricing their stuff in seven and they're like, yeah, you know, they get their sales and but nobody really bothered to test it to see if it really matters. And that's the thing. It's an absolute herd mentality. Now, I'm not going to say that there's not some psychology behind the pricing that you do. For example, if you see $29 versus $30, well, it might only be a buck off, but there's something psychologically different about seeing a price that starts in two versus a price that starts in three. You know, if you want to ask you know, uh, three hundred dollars for a product. Well, if you just go down one dollar and charge two hundred and ninety nine, the price just seems cheaper. We're not talking about just a buck. It seems cheaper than even that. And so there is some psychology to it, but at the same time, this number seven, there's nothing particularly special about it. There's really, really not. Outside of the internet marketing world, you see no fascination with this number. By the way, now here's the thing to keep in mind: the internet marketing world. For those of us who follow it, it seems like a big world, but it's really not. The internet marketing world is very, very small compared to the big, massive industries that we see out there in the quote-unquote real world. I mean, let's let's look at first the world of infomercials. If you go and watch any infomercial, here's the thing. There is a lot <laughs> of testing that goes into those infomercials because they're invested a fair amount of money into the creation of those infomercials. They definitely want them to convert. Now, watch an infomercial. Do you see any fascination with prices that end in seven? Answer equals none. You don't see anything like that. And they put a lot of money into testing. Now, let's go into really, really big uh, companies like Walmart. Do you see Walmart having any fascination with the prices that end in seven? Actually, they've got a lot of prices that end in eight, And I think it's just a differentiator with Walmart because I don't think that they've caught any testing that says, yeah, yeah. We entered an eight versus not, you know, 98 cents versus 99 cents. It's going to like sell better. No, it's just probably a differentiating thing, like maybe even a 
branding play on their part. Look at Amazon. Does you know Amazon? There, it's a it's an online business, but they sell pretty much everything, and their system does a lot of of price testing. It responds practically in real time to demand on things, so they test the hell out of anything. Now, go to Amazon, look at any particular product that you might be looking to get. Do you see any fascination with prices that end in seven? Absolutely not. So if you go out into the real world, into big, massive industries, you see absolutely no fascination with prices that end in seven. But for some reason in this world of internet marketing, you see it all the time. And, you know, so, I, I mean, at the end of the day, there's no real harm in it. Nothing. It's not gonna, like you're going to hurt anything by pricing it in seven, but you're also not really going to help anything either. Uh, the only thing that speaks to the benefit of ending in seven is tradition, I guess I could say. If you're in the world of internet marketing and the people who are buying from you are also in the world of internet marketing, well, they maybe they're, they're used to seeing prices that end in seven, so your price is not gonna stand out that much if you end it in seven. That's really about all there is to it, but there's not really any real testing to back it up. Now, when it comes to testing out prices, and their effects on conversion, specifically about this world of seven, I want to make sure that three things you keep in mind here when it comes to split testing pricing and thinking that you're going to, you're going to increase your conversion rate based on pricing alone. Three things. The first one is that testing the quantity of cents on your price probably isn't even worth the effort. I mean, here's the thing. If you're going to be selling a product, and, and let's say that you've got... You know, like the price of the of the blog monetization lab, $29.60. If I were going to go and split test $29.50, I'm going to get nothing significantly relevant there. I can just tell you that right now without even doing it. Um, you know, there's there was really no massive, you know, deep thought that went into that price point, okay? Um so you got to keep that in mind. You know, there, you're not, there's not going to be some magic number of cents on the end of your price that's going to magically increase your conversion rate. It's just not going to happen. That goes into my second point. There's no magic number which is going to mystically make people hit the buy button more often than another one, okay? And I know internet marketing people think that that number exists. And it's almost like they think that some number is going to have some deep, hidden, psychological influence on us. They're like, you just hit the button, you know, and buy it because of the way that you've priced it. No, that doesn't exist. Let's stop fooling ourselves here. There's no magic number. And even if an internet marketer tells you that there's some magic number ending in seven, just realize they're talking out of their butt, okay? Number three and that is that any incremental changes in your price should be more about recouping your cost of lead acquisition. Now, this is a really important point because here's the thing. We haven't talked about this yet, but if you are going out and running paid traffic from Twitter, Facebook, or other such networks, and you are acquiring leads that way, you're running them into a squeeze page, you're getting people to opt in for a free lead magnet, and then that gets them into your sales funnel. Very classic stuff, and I do this myself with my company. Now, if you run the numbers and you find that an incremental change in your pricing is going to make a difference and you're and you recouping your cost of leads, like getting leads and breaking even on that, then that's a legitimate reason to, to play around with the cents and maybe even the dollar figure on your price, okay? Because you, at that point, are just, you're getting your funnel to at least break even or better, and that's important. But in terms of actually increasing or decreasing conversion rate, you're probably not going to find that it makes much of a difference. Now, if you do massive swings in your pricing, that can affect conversion rate. I mean, if you if you change your price by many dollars, that can increase your conversion rate. But playing around with the cents, you should only do that when you've got a reason. And I think the only legitimate reason for that is going to be if you find that it makes a difference in paid traffic and making that funnel break even or better. Okay, that's really the only legitimate reason to do it. Okay, so my final thoughts here about this particular episode is that no, there is no deep reason for prices that end in seven. It's just some kind of weird tradition that runs in the field of internet marketing 
and fairly specifically to internet marketing because you really don't see it anywhere else. Everybody thinks there's some reason for it, but there's simply not. I can't find any legitimate reason other than tradition for ending your prices in seven. So the only real reason you might do it is so that you can tell the world, yes, I follow the world of internet marketing and I'm kind of copying them. That's really the only reason to end your prices in seven versus an eight versus a nine versus a four. It really doesn't matter that much. Okay, hopefully that was interesting to you. And I will see you on the next episode of Coffee Break Blogging, where we're going to continue talking about pricing your product, specifically how to actually start determining what your price should be. I'll see you then. Thanks for listening to this episode of Coffee Break Blogging. If you like what you heard here today, we have something awesome we'd love to send you. It's called the Blog Conversion Guide, and it has nine tweaks you can make to your blog in order to increase your conversion rate to get more opt-ins and sales. As one of our listeners, we'd love to give you access to this guide absolutely free. You can get your copy right now by going to coffeebreakblogging.com. Again, go to coffeebreakblogging.com to get your copy, and we'll see you next time.